welcome, welcome new eco, eco friends. friends. My name is Brent. My name is Hans. My name is Miguel. We are students representing Bishop David Motuk School, conducting our Year Four Community Project for the IB program. Welcome to the Eco Friends YouTube channel. Over the course of a three-episode series, we will bring you across our country, through forest to ocean. While discussing the issues our ecosystem faces, you will explore the context of globalization and sustainability and understanding the human impact on our environment. The EcoFriends series follows a weekly schedule. Every Thursday, tune in and enjoy a new episode focusing on new areas of our environment. Be sure to stay in the loop for future videos, comics, and even games releasing alongside our series. Now, let us begin our first episode of the EcoFriends series, focusing on the forests of Canada. In this episode, we will explore three sections for our first segment, Forest Degradation and Deforestation. In simple terms, forest degradation is when a forest cannot support wildlife, basically losing its normal function. This includes being unable to filter carbon dioxide into the air we breathe or to sustain the water that we drink. For animals, forest degradation removes their food sources and their homes. According to worldwildlifefund.com, 47% of forests will be at high risk of degradation by 2030. If you're confused, try to think of degradation as a camping tent with no pegs or a car with deflated tires. In same situations, they are both left unhabitable or unable to function. The chart shows each country's contribution to the total global forest degradation count. Notice that Canada accounts for nearly a quarter of the total data. Why are we contributing so much? Well, although Canada possesses over 100 million hectares of forest land, which is the third most forest land in the world, data embarrassingly reveals that we are not doing a proper job of maintaining it. So how can we reduce the count? Stay interested, we will answer this question later in the video. How does forest degradation occur? Here are some of the main causes of forest degradation. The first one we have is unsustainable and illegal agriculture, which is removing existing crops in that forest and replacing it with crops that aren't sustainable such as palm oil plants or rubber plants. The whole purpose of replacing existing crops with new crops is just so the company can sell it for a quick buck. Take a look at this photo of the boreal forest from 2019. Notice how roughly 67% of the land is forest, while the rest is the result of deforestation and degradation. Compare the forest with the second photo from 2014. Take note of the drastic change of landscape over a mere 5 years. In addition to degradation, the boreal forest is facing more wildfires and bug infestations than ever before. Have you ever driven by forests with these strange dead trees? These trees have been swarmed and infested by pine beetles, a concerning issue in our boreal forests. Next time you're on a road trip, keep your eyes peeled for forests like these as they are very common in our province. Let's focus back to the policy of planting a tree after cutting one down. Canada states that our actions are appropriately addressing the rate of deforestation, but in reality, we are not doing enough. Director of NRDC Anthony Swift states, The reality is the rate of logging in the Canadian boreal today is unsustainable. Anthony Swift is stating that the rate of Alberta's logging does not match with the rate of trees are regrown. Our boreal forests are facing much more than deforestation. Like we stated before, bug infestations and degradation and logging. But we are also facing major change in precipitate level, which is our rain and snow, climate change, and forest fires, which we'll get into more later. Deforestation has impacted many things, such as increased 
greenhouse gas emissions, disruption of water cycles, increased soil erosion, and disruption of livelihoods. When forests are cut, burned, or removed, they emit carbon dioxide instead of absorbing the carbon dioxide around it. This can lead to too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, making it dangerous for the population of humans. When it comes to the local water cycle, trees play a huge role. They help keep the balance between the water on the land and the atmosphere. Deforestation can occur quickly, such as when a forest is clear-cut to make room for an oil palm plantation, or when a fire sweeps through the region. While deforestation appears to be decreasing in some countries, such as Brazil and Indonesia, it remains alarmingly high here in Canada, posing a major threat to our world's most valuable forests. Erosion happens when wind blows away dirt and its minerals. However, erosion most likely occurs when trees aren't planted to anchor fertile soil and the land is swept into rivers. To illustrate, try to think of trees as a lock that prevents soil from flying away. Agricultural plants frequently replace lost trees. However, they are unable to hold soil in place. Coffee, cotton, palm oil, soybeans, and wheat are just a few of the plants that can increase soil erosion. Think of them as a lock left open. The photo on the left shows the effects of erosion in Alberta, taking place in Drumheller. Agricultural producers move on when fertile soil is washed away cutting more forests and perpetuating the cycle of soil loss. This picture is soil erosion in Africa, but if we don't stop deforestation in Alberta, our lands will start to depict the land shown. Therefore, deforestation only opens the door for more disasters to hurt our environment. If we don't reduce our actions, our forests and wildlife will be in danger. Stay tuned as we will explain some actions that will help reduce these effects later on in the video. Second segment, wildfires. Forests, savannas, grasslands, and tundras are all affected by wildfires. Human activity, whether intended or not, is causing an increasing number of wildfires. The majority of fires are started by accident or on purpose. Some examples of causes are burning trash and debris, industrial mishaps, and overspills. Every year, fires are releasing a large scale of carbon dioxide equal to the size of the European Union, which ultimately contributes to the rates of global warming. Take note of how each event has its consequences, or series of events. This teaches us that we must be mindful of our actions, since the outcome can be devastating. Stay tuned, we will explore topics of global warming in further detail in a future episode. In addition, wildfire smoke is responsible for an estimated 340,000 deaths per year due to illness and disease. Wildfires have long-term consequences for health, even after the flames have died out. Some of those long-term health consequences are asthma, lung damage, cancer risk, inflammation, and heart attack. Due to climate change, our wildfires in Canada are getting worse. With temperatures at an all-time high, it is the perfect time for wildfires to thrive. Wildfire season in Western Canada normally starts in April, so we must be prepared. Next segment, we will teach you a great way to reduce these effects. Final segment, how can you help? You recognize that you, as a single individual, cannot create new forests by touch. However, there are some smaller actions you can take that can be extremely beneficial if you persuade other people to participate. A simple way to reduce deforestation is to recycle. Recycling means to take reusable materials and create a new item. In fact, you have probably used a recycled item without even knowing it. 
to illustrate. Have you recently won a trophy or award? Well, that trophy was probably made of recycled materials. Some companies are now making their trophies using recycled glass and newsprint. And surprisingly, there are a lot of recycled materials you may be using. Your winter jacket from recycled plastic bottles, soap from old soap bars, or your cat's kitty litter from recycled newspapers. In addition of the addition of recycled items, picnic tables and park benches are also recycled objects made from plastics. Many people do not realize these are being made of recycled items. A quick shout out and thanks to Mr. Ernest. When we recycle, we are reducing the amount of raw materials we require. Using recycled material and limiting our usage of raw resources is a great way to reduce the effects of deforestation. By putting material waste in the right bins, we can restore the negative effects we have on the environment. There are specific bins for recycling plastic, metal, and paper, but now Edmonton has implemented a waste collection system. You may be unsure of what goes where, so here is a review. For garbage, we have single-use plastic items, dog waste, and snack wrappers. Keep in mind the single-use plastic items, they can be things like your plastic utensils. For recycling, we have pop cans, bottles, plastic bags, and cardboard. And for food scraps, it includes food leftovers, fruit, veggie peels, and eggshells. Please remember how important it is to put your garbage in the correct bin and to recycle as much as you can. For more information on garbage disposal, you can head over to edmonton.ca slash garbage waste for whatever you require. So, next time you have a wrapper from a snack, look at the wrapper before throwing it in the trash can. You may find a recyclable symbol which means you can dispose of it in the recycling bin. This simple notice could potentially help you in the future, who knows? Maybe you'll find your recycled Smarties wrapper in your cat's litter box. Recycling is one of the best ways to combat deforestation and degradation. The effects of deforestation are solved by recycling by preventing the need for wood. In turn, we also stop the effects of erosion from solving deforestation, all because of recycling. And because our forests remain healthy, we stop the dangers of forest degradation from recycling once again. Finally, with erosion and degradation prevented, we remove the fuel for wildfires to start. Hooray for recycling, the simple act that saves our forests. And with that, we have completed all our segments for our first episode. That's all folks, see you next week. But before you leave, we will test your knowledge on what you have learned. We recommend rewatching the video before attempting the quiz. Good luck! Which of the following statements best describe the term degradation? A, B, or C? Which of the following issues do our forests not face? True or false, recycling saves our forests. Leave your answers in the comments below. We will reveal the answers next episode. The first lucky three comments with the correct answers will receive a shout out in the next video. For the next episode of Eco Friends, we will bring you to another area of Canada's for you to learn and fully become an eco friend.